Hi guys, welcome to Go Tutorial Part 10. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. And today we're going to do some simple refactoring. So we're going to make our code a little bit leaner. We're going to do things like, for example, we're going to get rid of the base.html file. Make it so that we are calling our HTML templates in a more efficient way. We're also going to completely remove our flash.go file, but keep the same functionality that we had before. And we will be refactoring the way that we actually render the templates inside of our main.go file. So here you see it says template, parse files. We, use, we reuse this code a lot of times. Avoiding reusable code is a big part of refactoring code and makes it a little bit easier to do things. So that's what we will be trying to do in this tutorial. Before we get started, I just wanted to point out that we are using a, a early version of Gog Land, which is a IDEA JetBrains IDE that they just released for Go. Thus far I haven't hit any bugs with it, but you never know. If we do encounter any bugs, that would be the reason why. If any of you guys are interested in getting in on these early uh, editions, I'll leave a link in the description. I'm really actually quite liking this IDE. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is actually change the way our templates work. Currently, we have this skeleton template, the base template. Then we have an index template, which has our header and footer inside of it, as well as a body template, which has a block in it. And every time we render our template, basically what happens is the page that we go to, for example, say we go to our login page, we get this block rendered inside of our index block here at this main block here and then this all gets rendered inside of our base.html in these areas here. So what we want to do is we want to cut all of this out. So the base.html we want to remove all of this so that we can call each of our main templates individually. So when we go to our internal.html file we want to be able to call it but still get the header and footer inside of the page that we go to. And we want to do the same for our sign up and for our main. We also want to completely remove the flash.html file because we can actually do this quite a little bit better. So we can get rid of the flash.html file with a feature of the Go templating language that we haven't discussed yet. So I'm going to just go ahead and delete the file. And we do this by going into our main.html where we actually call the block here. And I've copied all of the stuff that was in the flash.html and I'm just going to paste it right here where that block was. So now we've got our little div element here. And we've got a printf statement with a uh, s, and it's processing in whatever data that's coming into this template. So the way this is going to work is we are going to make a statement here, and we're going to actually turn this entire thing into a block. So we're going to write end here, and we're going to use a method called with, and we're going to say with dot. So currently, if there is any data, it will render this part of the template. But if we specify with dot errors, then it will only render this template or this part of the template if we have a type of data that we're passing through that's called dot errors. And I'll show you how we actually implement that later. So now let's actually redefine this template. So we don't want it to be main. We want it to be a more unique modifier. So in this case, we'll just call it a uh, sign in makes sense because this is our sign in form and we want to import our header and our footer so we're going to bring those in as well so there you go now we're importing our header and our footer templates into this we also want to make a change to our header and footer templates so that they have all of the html in them so if we go into this file we can pull this part out and we can put it in our footer so we can put the HTML body tags and the HTML tag at the bottom of our footer here. Then we can take this little footer here and we can rip it out of this block here and put it down here in our footer and completely remove this body block because we won't need it. And now we can go into our base HTML, take out this tag, put it at the bottom of our header, and then take out these tags and place them at the at the top of our header. So now this index.html file only has our header and our footer template in it. It doesn't have a body template in it anymore. We can actually delete this base.html file. So now let's go and change our internal.html to be like our main.html where it's bringing in the header and footer. So this template is now called internal and now it's bringing in the header 
and the footer. And finally, we need to do the same for our sign up. So we will call this sign up and we will bring in both the header and the footer. Currently, if we run our program, it's not going to actually work because we don't actually have a base template. Every time we execute our template here, we're calling our base template. And since our base.html was our base template, this won't work anymore. So we need to do our refactor. We want to create a function called render. And this function is going to allow us to basically execute our templates. So we're going to pass in the HTTP response writer. We're going to pass in a name string. And we're going to pass in a data interface. And we're going to check for an error in this case. We'll say template.parse and we're going to say parse glob. And the way this function works is it takes in a regex pattern and then it parses all of the templates that are based on that pattern. So in this case, we can just put in a star.html and this will parse any file inside of this user folder with star.html next to it. And it will parse all of them together. And actually that will work for us because we will be calling each individual template. So now we can do our error checking. We can now say template execute template and we are going to call w and then name. We're going to pass the name string in here and then we're going to pass the data interface in. So we can actually pass render w sign in and message into here and then into this part this else part we can pass in render w sign in and u. So we're passing in the user that we create right here. And as you can see, this actually cleans up our code quite a bit. So now let's go to where we are also creating more templates. So for example, in the example page right here, we can remove this entire piece. And we can also use remove this entire piece here, as well as the error checking. So we can say render. And this is our example page. So we're going to call internal which is the template for our internal.html. So as you can see, we're calling the name of each template and that's how it's working. And then we can pass in uh, you, which will be a instance of user. So there we go. We've created an instance of user right here on the spot and we're setting it into render. And finally, we need to do it for our sign up form here. So let's remove this and remove this. And if we put right here, render w and pass in sign up and then u so this is all well and good and it makes things a lot cleaner but one problem we will run into is with this here so we're passing a string in here but because of the way that we've set up our flash message in main this will actually not render so let me show you what i'm talking about okay so we're at our login form and as you can see it's not rendering but if we go to our sign up it should work perfectly so we're having a problem because of that message so we could go back in and comment that out or we could change this structure so that it works properly. So the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to go into our data structure here and we're going to create a new field and this field is going to be called error or it's going to be called errors and it's going to take in a map with two string bodies. So the key will be a string and the value will be a string type. And we're going to do this for a reason that will become clear later on in the tutorial. Okay, so the way that we circumvent the problem with our message variable here is that we define a variable u that is equal to an instance of our struct of user and then we say specifically that our u dot errors which means the u errors field equals a map of string and string and then we say u dot errors message equals string message so we convert the message into a string and then we set it equal to the value of message so if we run this as you can see the formatting is wrong, but our message is popping up. So we can actually reload it and it goes away and pops up. The way that we actually correct this so that we only get the message, we can just go into our main.html and we can put a dot here and then type in message, which is the field of the actual uh, map. So as long as you put the map value in here after the uh, original field, it should work. So if we save all this and then we reload it, there we go. We're just getting uh, the string that we want. So one other quick thing that we did is we actually changed the way our signup worked. Before we had each of our form values being set to a variable and then we set the variables inside of our user. Instead, what we're doing here is we're uh, putting our form values into our user directly. So we're calling each of the fields and then we're setting them equal to the form value. This is a much more succinct way of doing things and we don't have to set aside any more memory to create these temporary variables. So the other big thing that we 
want to do in this tutorial is we want to get rid of our flash.go file. So currently we are encoding and decoding cookies using this base64 URL encoding uh, library in this particular uh, file. And then inside of our cookie.go file we are using our uh, secure cookies encode and decode to do exactly the same thing. So it's sort of redundant that we have both of these. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to recreate our get message and set message functions inside of our cookies file. So the way we do this is actually very easy. So our set message is going to be very simple or very similar to our set session function. In fact, we can just copy most of this here, paste it in here and just change a few things. So for example, if we remove this part here and we change this entire string to name and then we can change this part to our message. So now we're just putting in our little name and message. And of course we can change this from a byte to a string to make things simpler. And then we say if encoded cookie handler and this should become name and the value stays the same and then in here we're going to write name as well. And that's all we need to do for set message and then for our get message if we pull our get username function here copy this and put it inside of our get message here. We can then change all of this so let's remove this part here and we want to actually return message of type string so this will be now a global variable inside of this function and we will change this part here the session part to name and this is creating a map here and then we're taking the map and we're decoding it from our cookie so we are going to replace this with name and then we want to call the name field of our cookie and set it equal to msg and then we're going to return msg. So this is exactly the same as what we were doing in our flash.go file except now we're using the encode and decode from our secure cookie library. There is one more little uh, edit that we need to make and that is with our clear sessions function here. We want to pass in a name of type string in here so that we can actually call on the session that we want to clear. So when we clear a cookie we can say okay we want to clear this specific cookie. And we're going to call clear session right here at the end of get message. So we're going to say clear session and then we're going to type in name. And what this will do is it will allow us to get the message from the cookie and remove the cookie. We also of course need to pass in w. So we just say clear session w and name. So after we get the, the message from our cookie value, then we delete the cookie and then we just return the message. So then we need to amend everywhere else that we have clear session, which is inside our main.go file. So here's clear session. We just need to pass in a name right here. In this case, we're just going to hard code session in here. Also, we're going to need to remove the slice of byte modifiers here because these are being passed in as strings now rather than bytes. And we're also going to need to do the same for here as well. First of all, this is not becoming a string. And strings can't be nil in Go. Instead, they can only be empty strings. We're only returning one variable, in this case, message. So we're not returning an error and a message. We're only returning a message. So all of this should now work quite nicely. So now we, we only need to run three files when we spin up our server. And there we go. So this is all working really quite nicely. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it was not exactly the most enlightening of tutorials. We did kind of go over some new cool things inside of the Go templating engine. And we also talked about how we can keep things consistent. And how we can sort of render things differently for our templates. In our next tutorial, we're going to talk about how we can hash our password as well as create our unique user ID. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to comment. And if you dislike this video, as always, feel free to dislike it. I hope you guys had a good holidays, and I hope you guys have a good New Year.